No, I don't own a Nintendo Switch. My little brother pestered my parents until they got him one. And he was kind enough to give me the box. The empty box. And boy was I wrong about Sucker Punch unveiling something this E3. They did nothing. Okay, let's just take this from the top. So, here we are at the PS3 generation with a new video. For those of you that didn't watch my PS3 anniversary video and don't know how, how I got my PS3, well, I'm gonna keep it short. I'm gonna add a spin to it. The PS3 released on November the 11th in 2006, and if you want to know how well it did, just know that Sonic 06 released just three days after the PS3 on November 14th, 2006. So yeah, Sonic 06 was a launch title for the PS3. And yes, I know the game was on the Xbox 360, but I actually never knew what an Xbox was until 2007. Yes, I did not know about the existence of the original Xbox or its younger sibling, the Xbox 360. Back then, I only knew Sony and Nintendo. I mean, I did see the original Xbox box maybe two times thanks to a friend of mine but i did not inquire about what the hell it was i only learned about the xbox 360 because my cousins all loved halo well halo 3 to be more specific but anyway regarding my comment on the ps3 when that thing launched it was six hundred dollars hell goddamn dorado he was onto something big all right i actually vividly remember that because i don't live in north america so while the playstation 3 was six hundred dollars in the u.s where I lived, it was $1,600. And it took about three months for the, not even go to a realistic price, just go down in general. Uh, well, it didn't, it didn't matter because I wasn't gonna get a PlayStation 3 until a certain game came out. And uh, that game was Metal Gear Solid 4. So yeah, by the time that game came out, the 20 gigabyte fat PS3 had already came out at a low price. If you consider $499 for 20 gigs a low price. By that time, I had already been saving for like two years. So the PlayStation 3 was the first console I actually bought with my own money. Uh, not this PS3, I mean my old fat one that died on me while I was playing Dark Souls. Which is uh, kind of symbolic, don't you think? But anyway, so with my history with the console covered, let's jump into the game's history. Uncharted 1 was released in 2007 for the PS3, developed by the one and only Naughty Dog, the developers of the much beloved Crash Bandicoot trilogy plus kart racing game, and the Jack and Daxter series that I know nothing about. Speaking of Crash Bandicoot, we are getting a remake of the Crash trilogy at the end of the month called Crash Insane Trilogy. I am calling it right now, the remake will get the same kind of scores that UK Laylee did. I mean, I hope I'm wrong about this, but I can totally imagine mainstream reviewers going, we have come so far in terms of game design that the original Crash Trilogy shows its archaic age because yes, we have come far. With DLC, microtransactions, game split to force a trilogy, game split for the sake of episodic releases, 30 FPS on the majority of games, incomplete games, broken games, always online, unnecessary DRM, on this DLC, mid-cycle expensive console upgrades, and of course, more remakes and remasters than actual original IPs. I mean, even with all that I mentioned, I'm pretty sure I forgot something that's how big this list is. Wah, I don't like the bike segments. Wah, I don't like the flying segments. Wah, I don't like the underwater segments. I have no idea why it became Donald Duck there. But anyways, let's move on. As for the Uncharted series, well, I didn't really jump into it until the second game was about to come out in the sense that I saw how good the second game looked from the trailers and I said to myself that I better beat the first game before the second game came out so that I can jump into it right away. So in retrospect, before I played the first game, I saw it as merely a nuisance, something I had to do before I got to the main dish. So was I right with that assessment or was I wrong? Well, let's find out by spoiling the story. And I am gonna spoil everything, so if you don't want the story spoiled to you, then mute the video and look away. I mean, I still need the views. Whore. Hey, there's no need for that. Then what do you call the thing that you just did? Yeah, that was pretty slowly. Now, before jumping into the story, I would like to note that I'm going to be reviewing the Uncharted Nathan Drake collection on the PS4, and not the originals on the PS3. For the simple reason being that aside from receiving a resolution bump to 1080p, okay, all three games now run at a rock-solid 60fps. And uh, I don't know about you, but I would rather poke my ass out than play a game at 30 FPS. Unless, of course, the 30 FPS version is the only version available. And, or when I, you know, sit down to record footage of the 30 FPS version for the review, but then accidentally end up playing the game from start to finish. 
So that Uncharted Nathan Drake collection, while the original versions were made by Naughty Dog, the collection was not remastered by them, it was remastered by Bluepoint Games, who are like the only guys I trust with remasters, they have a pretty solid track record, almost every remaster they made comes out with little problems and is a proper remaster, some of the games they remastered that I already played and can vouch that the remaster was of a pretty good quality are the God of War collection, Flower and the Metal Gear HD collection. This also explains why the Zone of the Enders HD collection was a mess, because it was not done by them. That said, regarding that collection, to the best of my knowledge, the PS3 version is now patched and runs at a smooth 60 FPS, but that only applies to the second game. Whereas the first game runs better on the Xbox 360, I'm not really sure. Point is, do your research before deciding on which version to get. Of all the collections, why this one? But anyway, that's not the game we are talking about today, no. Today we are taking a look at the Uncharted collection, and what did Blue Point do to the first game? Well, they did not just remaster the first game, but update the textures as well. The characters look a hell of a lot better in the PS4 remaster than they do in the PS3 original. I mean, just look. Yikes. Though the eyes could have used some improvement, that said, I do realize that eyes and hair tend to be a complex issue in video games, so I will give that a pass. That said, the PS3 character models are, well, the stuff of nightmares. Among the three games, when the first one was remastered, the resolution and frame rate weren't the only thing that were improved on as you guys just witnessed. This does not only apply to the characters, it also applies to the surrounding environments too. For this review, I beat the game twice, once on the PS3 version and once on the PS4 version. Truth be told, I played it twice because while I originally intended to record about 2 hours of the PS3 original to get a proper feel for it in comparison with the remake, I ended up playing the game to the end. And that, I don't think is a reflection on the game's performance, but it is a reflection of the gameplay and story of Uncharted 1. That said, I feel like I will have the same opinion on the sequels just from beating the original on the PS3, and it's that I can tell you right now that there is no reason to ever play the PS3 originals thanks to the remaster. Oh, and another difference is that the remaster removed the 6 axis segments. Thank freaking god, I could never get those to work and it also removed throwing your grenades with it as well. I don't know about you, but those are two things I'm glad they got rid of. Because the grenade throwing distance was just pathetic with the 6 axis, unless I'm doing some wrong and now with the basics covered let's time to jump in the uh who story Uncharted's Drake Fortune follows the story of, well, Nathan Drake, as the title suggests. Uh, well, that's what you would think, but no. The Drake in the title refers to Sir Francis Drake, as you guys could probably guess by now that yes, this is an Indiana Jones-inspired video game, with a tint of Tomb Raider mixed in. The game starts with our future serial mass murderer, Nathan Drake, pulling out a coffin without a permit. Uh, why is he doing this? Well, aside from the fact that, well, he's gonna need more than one coffin if he would want to bury all the dead bodies that you're gonna rack up by the end of the game, is that he is a coffin raider slash treasure hunter grave robber guy? He did this because he was aiding the lovely Elena Fisher, a TV reporter who funded this expedition that said, considering that Nathan Drake went in without a permit, where the hell did she find him? On Craigslist? Anyway, sure enough, this being illegal and all, pirates show up. The modern kind. They don't take prisoners. At least not male prisoners. Wait, what are you talking about? Well, well thank God I'm a dude. Well, you got to prison, you're kind of... Screwed either way. Anyway, boat explodes and we are rescued by arguably the best character in the franchise, Victor Goddamn Sullivan. Get used to that, you're gonna be hearing this quite a lot in this review and future Uncharted reviews. Anyway, apparently what was in the coffin was not a body but a journal that contained the secret treasure of El Goddamn Dorado. Alright, I'll stop with that now. Maybe. So after we make it to safety, Drake and Victor decide because Miss Elena Fisher is a reporter, they should ditch her. Sully, the girl can hold her own. You should have seen her. Clearly, you don't think that. Otherwise, that nonsense in Uncharted 4 would not have happened. But this is Uncharted 1, so I digress. And ditch her they did. Following the journal, our main protagonists are led to... There's nothing here, Nate. Well, hang on. Don't be so pessimistic. Uh, bingo. I wonder what we'll find in there. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh, come on. Hey. I assume there's gonna be some treasure after that. Well, that's not treasure, that's just some hieroglyphics. A huge gold statue. And look here, these people, they're worshipping the damn thing. <laughs> there's some, uh, there's something about the way he delivers that line that just gets me every time. I don't know what it is. It just... Uh... 
anyway we find a ship it has a map we leave and we are introduced to the main villains who shoot victor goddamn sullivan nathan however does not panic enough about losing a guy he has known for years who is let's face it is practically a father figure for nathan uh we will get to that later but hang on didn't so when he told me that you two were onto something big the find of a lifetime he said well i was intrigued yes all this happened because sully couldn't keep his mouth shut well on the bright side at least nathan got a girlfriend out of it nathan makes a rather broken escape sequence yeah i wouldn't call this an escape sequence anyways we meet elena fisher while a sucker punch i still love the way she connected it whoa there cowboy oh. Ugh. that's for leaving Ow. me at the dock we then get into the camouflage jeep and we leave this place to find the location of the actual treasure and yes indeed the adventure begins without victor because you know he's dead he, he really is dead and after that nathan and elena make their way over to the island with the riches their plane gets shot at with anti-aircraft fire what kind of army are we fighting nathan abandons the plane and parachutes his way to the ground And so we start looking for the treasure, well that and finding Elena, but treasure first. Joking aside, while I do pick up treasures if I see them, it's not really a priority for me. Trophies, achievements and the like aren't really my thing, mostly because I play on everything and if I would want to be a trophy or an achievement hunter, that would mean that I would need to commit myself to one platform and I'm not about to do that. That said, I find platinuming a game applies to the game itself. If it's a game I really, really enjoy, then I will platinum it because I enjoy it and not because of my overall total score. Like how I platinumed Infamous 1, which remains the only game I platinum. Yes, there is the Sly Cooper Platinum, but to get that Platinum, you essentially just need to beat the game plus doing a few other minor tasks. So I don't really count that Platinum trophy. That said, playing Uncharted 1 again, I kinda want to Platinum it one day. There is something about playing this game that I really, really enjoy. Speaking of which, now is as good of a time as any to talk about the gameplay. Let's start with the movement and climbing mechanics before jumping into the actual gun combat. And for what the game is trying to be, I find the controls to be almost perfect the running walking climbing rolling and jumping all work well and are fun to execute i mean sometimes it feels like nathan is not listening to what you're exactly telling him like this part right here in the church which can seriously go die in a fire but this not really being a high speed action game issues with the turning end up being minor inconveniences at worst considering that if you fall by accident nathan will grab the nearest ledge thus preventing accidental deaths about 99 percent of the time in my experience now regarding the climbing you can't climb anywhere you want this is not breath of the wild but the game is not open world either this is a linear story driven adventure game the amount of things that the game allows you to climb and the amount of minor detours that you can make to find treasure perfectly fits in with what the game is trying to do that said most of the game is pretty clear on where you have to go and how which is why sometimes when moments do pop up where you have to figure stuff out might seem out of place like take this section over here is this how i'm supposed to do it if so the animation doesn't look right or this place right here for example but regardless the amount of times where i was confused on where to jump were only a handful and i assume most people were easily able to figure out where to go because i'm a moron when it comes to this sort of stuff but anyways regarding the climbing mechanics in my experience things can go a little wrong if you try to do it a little too fast or not do something the way the game intends but if you take things slow you should have no problems especially considering how nathan signals where he intends to jump Furthermore, I would much rather have the game leave the climbing to the player like how Uncharted does it than leave it automated like how Enslaved does it, where they basically remove dying by making a mistake because you can't make a mistake because the climbing is so automated. With the movement and climbing covered, it's time to talk about the gunfights. And... I love the gun combat. Yes, I know that this might be surprising to hear since everyone, everyone who reviews the Uncharted game seems to have the same general complaint, which is regarding the gun combat, which is that it's not good. Seriously, go watch an Uncharted review and take a shot every time someone complains about the combat system. I mean an actual shot, not 
shot that said when it comes to such mechanics before i generally criticize i like to ask a question does this system fit in with what the game is trying to do in uncharted's case i find that the answer is yes otherwise i wouldn't have as much fun with it as i do and in this game's case i find that the stage and area designed to greatly affect how the gameplay feels with how nathan controls his gameplay is best suited for slightly open areas that leave clear markers on where the enemy positions might be especially considering that the game is not tactical enough that it requires something like a metal gear solid radar that helps pinpoint where the enemies are thus allowing for a fluid gameplay experience and that's at the core of what can make the controls fun and uncharted 1 is mostly that but in instances like here where you have no idea where the hell enemies are shooting at you from is where the game gets frustrating because again i enjoy the gunfights but i do find myself getting irritated in instances where the stage design does not complement the gameplay speaking of the gameplay this game is very arcade in its design and honestly does not feel like a game released in 2007 because another thing i hear people complain about is how much the second game improved and that made me ask myself did the second game really improve things gameplay wise or is it just different in my opinion while uncharted 2 is overall the best game in the uncharted series i don't think the combat is so much better as much as it is different because the combat in uncharted 2 plays exactly how you expect an uncharted game to play while the combat in uncharted 1 plays more like an old snes arcade game honestly which in a way explains why i enjoy it so much uncharted 1 is the most video game among the mainline games and ironically to most people that's why it's worse than its sequels because it's the most gamey of them all but i think that if you try to enjoy the game for what it is instead of what you think it should be which is be more like its sequels i think a lot more people will enjoy the game speaking of that while playing uncharted 1 specifically one of the things i like to do is get as many headshots as i possibly can and i do succeed for the most part but that only applies for uncharted 1 for some reason the second and third game don't really give me that urge so i usually just end up putting as many bullets as i can into people i even unintentionally got the 250 headshot trophy on my second playthrough while i was trying to capture specific footage i like that and i also maybe like to pick up a shotgun and go off like a mass murderer let's put the gameplay aside for a second and talk about the graphics and well the ps3 version has definitely aged i mean all the technical problems you can think of are in this version screen tearing texture pop in blurriness thanks to the 720p resolution frame rate drops it's all here so how does the remastered look well on its own i would say it's a game that has aged but still holds up pretty well especially considering that it came out very early in the ps3's life cycle it's very rare to find a game released early during that generation aging well and uncharted 1 aged gracefully i would say but anyway that's if we compare it in general but when compared to the ps3 version the remaster looks absolutely breathtaking solid 60 fps throughout no screen tearing the resolution has been updated to 1080p the textures have been upgraded to create an absolutely gorgeous game that is worthy of a visit if you've never played the game before or even a revisit if you played it before that said while texture pop in has been greatly reduced it unfortunately still is present in the game but not nearly to the extent it was in the ps3 original speaking of aging want to know what didn't age when it comes to this game the script oh my god the script in this game is absolute gold and arguably is the thing that holds up the most when it comes to this game. I mean, seriously. I'm in the captain's quarters. Get this, he's still here. What's that supposed to mean? Yeah, it looks like he was killed. Ripped to shreds, actually. Oof, what a way to go. Yeah, sounds terrible. Take his wallet. You're all hearts, Sully. Too many big bar tabs in Lima, I guess. <laughs> that and... Well, just a few bad deals. Yeah, well, I always told you to stay away from the bad guys. And the bad girls. Do you know how to use one of these? Uh, yeah, it's like a camera. You just you point and shoot, right? Good girl. Close this thing back up. Yeah. Nate, be careful. <laughs> Come on. I always am. Ah! I did not see that! Ah! I don't know about you, but aside from the second game, none of the other Uncharted games writing comes even close to this. In fact, Uncharted 1 has my favorite scene in the entire franchise, and that scene is this. Daikujin, you were never very good at poker. I will find her, trust me. How much trouble could one girl be? And 
my favorite part about that scene is this. When Nathan takes the map from Eddie, the way the scene was executed, the look on Eddie's face is just all so perfect, which makes it my favorite scene. Did I say favorite scene enough times? Anyway, speaking of the story, let's talk about how we got to this point. After Nathan Drake's rough landing, he runs in search of Elena, but not before finding his plane and retrieving the map. Upon stumbling across Elena's parachute, we notice that she made her way into this building over here that is, well, full of enemies, and by the time we kill everyone and find the vehicle of vitality sent down by the gods to occupy this land After that, we head into the building, only to learn that Elena has made her way all the way over to the other side, and while trying to protect her, we get attacked and that's how we end up in that cell. After getting rescued by Elena, we do this vehicle section, followed by Elena and Nathan driving off a cliff. Now following that comes a scene where the two characters have a little talk on what they're supposed to do now. While Drake decides to leave and Elena decides to stay because that's who she is, and that's something that Uncharted 4 clearly fails to understand. Go to the tower! But anyway, they both agree to do different things, but mostly agree to leave the island. However, that changes when Nathan learns that Sully is still alive and well. And this is the scene that perfectly demonstrates how much Nathan trusts Sully, because he says that... What if it turns out he's working with them? We either rescue him, or we beat the crap out of him. Hell, I might just beat the crap out of him anyway. Never once did he mention kill, and his delivery regarding how he might just beat the crap out of him anyways is the kind of thing you only say about people you really trust. I don't know how to explain it, but some folks will get it. That said, let's make our way to Sully. <laughs> how the hell did I survive that? So we rescue Sully and it turns out I was right. But that doesn't happen before Elena loses her camera. You know, for such an expensive piece of equipment in a dangerous place, you would think that Elena would attach it to her belt using a wire or something. But no, she lost the camera and her uninsured boat that was blown up. I'm not gonna be surprised if she gets fired at the end of this. But anyway, we find Sully and well, I will just let him explain the situation. All right, so how is it you're standing here breathing and all, huh? <laughs> you are not going to believe this. Huh? <laughs> no way. <laughs> Old Francis took a bullet for you. Yeah. I thought this kind of thing only happened in the movies. Yeah, well, it still hurt like a son of a bitch, I'll tell you that. <laughs> I bet. Anyway. Once they realized I wasn't dead. And I suppose now is a good time to talk about the voice acting. And well, I really have nothing else to say other than it's perfect in the sense that the voice actress created a character that is them. Where people were able to turn a blind eye to Carmelita's voice changes in the Sly series, I don't think it's possible to do that in the Uncharted series when it comes to the three main trio. And regarding the main trio, they are stuck right now trying to figure out a puzzle in the monastery, which yeah, the puzzles, I haven't spoken about them yet. So what do I think? Well, I wouldn't necessarily call them puzzles per se, like you know how in older games you would have to do a few things before a door would open? I would say that's what they are, and again for the type of game that Uncharted is, they work perfectly. Because Uncharted is first and foremost an adventure game, and one of the elements of a good adventure game is having the gameplay and story always moving, while still having a consistent pace. Sure, some puzzles should have been a little more difficult, but overall I don't think it's something that hurts the game in the long run. Though for some reason I never seem to be able to solve this puzzle early i could swear i'm doing it right but what the hell am i doing wrong regardless after solving the puzzle and making our way underground we find soldiers my god this is worse than any bed bug infestation i have ever seen over there oh, geez, these guys are everywhere with this kind of infestation, it's time to jump back into the gameplay. I really like how in some areas of the game, the way they are designed is very much clearly meant to be a battlefield. I've been with the unit since I was born. I grew up on the battlefield. Conflict and victory were my parents. Wait, did the enemies just blow themselves up? Uh, guess my melee strategy is not recommended. I still like to do it though. Something about the melee I really like. Maybe because it's so clunky and goofy. My main strategy in Uncharted is to use the handgun for headshots, the shotgun for run and gun, and finally the melee for those times when someone pisses me off so much that I need to punch them. He's over here! Me, me, me. Oh, shut up! That's right! 
Anyway, let's continue with the story. After making our way out of the tunnels, we head to our next destination that has another puzzle after which we wait am i playing uncharted or dark souls well again this goes to my point regarding how uncharted 1 is the most video game of the mainline games but anyway after making our way in sen's fortress we meet up with eddie again and this is where i did that whole shotgun killing spree speaking of eddie well he dies killed by monsters yeah i did not see that one coming either i mean i know the game hints at it in a few places which i wish it didn't because i love how the game presents itself as this semi-realistic video game only to do a complete 180. We will get to what those monsters are in a bit, I would just like to have a moment regarding Eddie Raja, who is perhaps one of my favorite side characters and I really wish they did not kill him off so quickly. I mean that scene with him earlier in the game along with this scene where he delivers one of my favorite lines in the game. Oh crap, Jake, if we don't make it out of here, I just want you to know, I hate your guts. Yeah, likewise, pal. Now let's do this. Anyway, after that, we end up here, and I'm honestly as baffled as the characters on how they got here. Nate. What? Where are we? I'm not sure. And so we leave Elena for the time being because she's not a monkey. And it is here where we learn the secret behind the monsters, which is basically that the treasure has some sort of mutagenic inside that I assume was meant to stop people from stealing it. So after learning that, we go back only to find that Elena has been captured by the bad guys. But before we can save her and have a happy ending, we need to go back to... What a thrill With darkness and silence through the night Victor, goddamn Sullivan. Because of all the people in the game, he might just be the one that wants El Goddamn Dorado the most. So we go get him and then go rescue Elena. And this is where Mini Villain tricks the main villain into opening the coffin, at which point he transforms, which causes Mini Villain to kill main villain and therefore becoming the main villain himself. They pull up El Goddamn Dorado into the sky. Nate grabs on, Elena kicks, plane crashes, and here we are at the final boss there are only two things that save this boss from being one of the worst bosses i have ever faced the first one being the fact that while uncharted 1 can be unfair at points which relates directly to the stage design as i mentioned earlier the fact that checkpoints are so frequent and so close to each other at least to me manages to negate some of the frustration i mean look at this it's like playing super meat boy and lastly at any point during the game if you find a certain section difficult or annoying you can start that chapter at a lower difficulty whereas in most games if you'd want to switch difficulties you're gonna have to start a new game but that's not how it is in uncharted so having these two things implemented in the game reduces any real frustrations the game may have had and to minor annoyances i swear in this day and age a chapter selection screen should be mandatory in every game i mean how many times have you wanted to play a specific part in a video game but that part was near the middle or the end of a video game and and so you have to start a new game and play hours before you get to that scene. But anyway, I find that the final boss in Uncharted 1 falls into that Sonic 2 territory of bosses, where the boss is not that bad once you know what to do. I mean, use the shotgun like this in the beginning, after which kill this guy first and take out the others normally. Do take note of where the second cards come from. And lastly... Ugh. You know, I generally don't mind quick time events as much as most people do. I mean, I love them in God of War, but I can't stand how they were implemented in Uncharted 1. For the simple fact that there aren't that many of them. There's like four in the entire game. Since it doesn't happen in most cutscenes, if this is your first time playing the game, you will have no clue on when they might show up. Even though I played this game a lot, if I go a long time without playing, then these quick time events still take me by surprise sometimes. They were totally unnecessary, especially considering how they were implemented. But anyway, we get to the last section get into a fist fight with the main villain knock his ass out and hey dude seriously i think you should you know get his shotgun get his weapon first come back well i wonder what's gonna happen next nate adios asshole You know, a lot of people seem to dislike this part of the ending. While I get the cliche, much like Sly 3's ending, I'm admittedly a sucker for these type of endings. And also, endings where the good guys, you know, actually win. I like this one better. 
<laughs> Sully, you beautiful son of a bitch! Borrowed it off a couple of pirates who were too dead to care. <laughs> And that's how the game ends, with the good guys driving away towards the beautiful sunset after an adventure that left them with what I would assume being filthy, filthy rich. I know I'm not supposed to say this, but Uncharted 1 is my second favorite Uncharted game. I personally love the game to death, and I was clearly wrong in thinking that the game was gonna be a hindrance to me. What I love about the game other than the arcade-like gameplay is the story. The story does not really have a point to it besides people that want to get rich and one person that wants a story. But this lack of high stakes is exactly why I love the game so much. In the second game, things are a little more intense where Nate gets shot and almost dies. The third game delves into his childhood and the fourth game is just too depressing, man. And because of that, the first game, I could easily go back to it to play it over and over and over again. With the other games, I have to be in a certain certain mood before I can play them. But with the first game, due to its lighthearted nature, I can put it in anytime, anywhere and have a hell of a lot of fun playing it. The gameplay is fun, the writing is brilliant, and listening to Nate call Sully a beautiful son of a bitch at the end always puts a smile on my face as I watch the end credits roll. And this was my review of Uncharted 1 Drake's Fortune. And uh, I don't know what else to add, I mean I just really love the game. and. Uh, yeah, I totally understand why people think it's the weakest one when compared to its sequels, but, you know. Uh, speaking of sequels, next time we're going to be taking a look at Uncharted 2. So with that being said, for those of you who are watching, wherever you may be in this world, thank you guys for watching, and stay alive until the next video. Jesus, what are those things? It's the Spaniards, Sully. They never left.